If you've been liking my videos and would like to encourage me to keep creating more and delivering great content for you, please smash that subscribe button and click like for this video. I would love to hear from you too. Leave comments, leave questions, leave suggestions for new topics. I read them all and your direction feedback would help me improve my comment will help me improve my content all the time thank you so much for listening to me thank you for very much for paying attention to my videos i appreciate your time and hope i can help you become a better salesforce developer a better salesforce professional you've seen my video on how to set up an einstein bot uh, now you might be wondering how do you get the einstein bot to do some useful things for you that's what this video is about what are some simple things the einstein bot can do for you the first scenario we'll look at is getting the account number and here's how to set it up here is an invocal method that gets us an account number when we provide an account name okay so input is the account name and the output is the account number so this is an invocal method here we are returning the account number so let's say I build this code, I built this invocal method. Next thing I have to do is always, the first thing is go to the permission set call for the chatbot. Here it is. So it's typically the last permission set. You go to the Apex class access and give the bot access to the class okay this class is called get account number all right next thing you'll do is go to object settings go to the accounts object and give the bot permission to read this object and then the fields here the field we expect the bot to access the account name this is the bot has access to this by de default and the one we have to check off is the account number this is the field we would like to the bot to read so i enable both click save okay so that we completed the task on the permission side next thing we do is we go to the bot and and we create a dialog you can call the dialog anything but basically here's what we're doing here the i'm deactivating this so i can show you exactly so here we the bot is asking what account name are you seeking the account number for the the user of the bot gives us an account name and this is saved to a slot a text slot Then we complete an action, which is the invocal method, the get account number. And that's written right here, right? Get account number. I highly recommend, I urge people who write invocal methods to give the label that matches the class name. Otherwise, it'll be very difficult to find when you have a lot of classes. Um, if the label and the class name are different it'll get confusing all right so i complete this action input is account name output is account number so this is here's what we're saying we're saying uh, the accounts account number is this okay let's test it so I'm activating this. So here's a class, yeah? Let's call it class DC. And the account number is one, two, three. Let's make it four, five, six, seven, okay? To test the 
bug, we can just use the preview button, click submit, chat with an expert. So here is the account number. Oh yeah, I added this dialog account number to the welcome screen right here. So that's why it's showing up. So it's asking me, what account name are you seeking the account number for? All right. That's the first question right here. I say DC. And it tells me the account number is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All right, this was a very simple scenario. Uh, let's take a look at another scenario. Is this scenario the bot will create a case? So this is an invocal method. They will create a case. The user will be inputting uh, the account name and and then give us a description so that we know for which. It, account this case is being created for what this case will be about all right so here, this is how the local method will look like here first we're doing a circle query to locate the account that the user has input and then here we're setting up the case the subject feedback origin the bot and the case will be tied to the account that the user provides the status will be closed and here is a description. Then we are inserting the case. And next we are uh, searching for that case after we insert it so that we can uh, return the case number. And we can display the case number to the user so that uh, they have a, so it serves like a confirmation number. So let's, let's say that I just created this in local method next thing i would do is go to the permission set let's give the chatbot permission set access to create case done so done next thing what is next thing we should do Yes, we need to give it object access. Let's go to the case object. So let's give it permission to read so that we can read the case number from it and also to create. We want to read the account name, the case number. Yes, we want to be able to read it. What else do we want to? Description, description, description. Okay, here we go. Edit access. This should be it, right? Account name, account name, yes. Subject, okay, subject origin status. Subject origin. Status. Okay, sorry. All right, this is it. Create. Read. Okay, this is it. Okay, next thing I'll do is let's deactivate this. So I'm going through these steps so that you know how to create these local methods and how you can integrate them into the into the uh, into the bot builder so here let's create a dialog create case let's say let's call submit feedback all right next on the welcome menu submit submit feedback Okay, let's save this. Let's go to submit feedback. Let's ask a question. For which account do you wish to submit feedback? Account name. And next we will ask um, 
What is your feedback for that account? Let's create a new slot. Feedback. The, the entity type should be text, right? Because description is a text field. Alright. And then, so we got an account name. We got the feedback. Next, let's do an action. Create case. Okay, the account name right here. Description will be the feedback. And the output. The output is an object. Yes, yeah, so we have to create a slot that is object type. Case. Case. So it's called create case object all right so we so this action would create the case and would return us the case object so what i'll do is i will let's say your feedback has been received your Information number is created case dot case number. I think that's in, let's check what the field name is for the case number. Case number. Okay, right here. Okay. All right. Let's try this. Hopefully this will work. Activate preview bot. Chat with an expert. Submit feedback. So this is the account that we earlier used. What's your feedback? But is learning fast. All right, so it looks like the case was created, but we're not picking up the case number. So, 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 so let's just check my cases. Did anything get? Let's look at the latest case. Okay, so the case got created right here. See, account name DC, feedback, bot is learning fast, but I did not pick up the case number. Hmm, why didn't we get the case number? created case dot case number okay I'd really like to display the case number so that the user has something to refer back to oh there was a space here see okay fix it okay let's try again now preview Back. Do you see case number shows up now? Okay, still didn't show up. Create created case. I did some debugging of the code and I realized I made a little mistake, so I fixed it here. In the Sockle query, and now let's look at it. So it's created case dot case number, yeah. So let's again run that submit feedback for the DC account. 
and we'll case number show up and here is the case number so let's go into Salesforce and look for this case okay it hasn't come up yet still being being okay it'll show up here it is case number show up all right so we just looked at two Einstein bot scenarios one is to get the account number the other one is to create a case and get the case number 